sprints out to him, hugs him and kisses him and can't wait to bring him inside. And the son starts off on his confession to bargain back favor with his father. And the father stops him mid-sentence and says, get the robe, get the ring, put shoes on him and go and get the sacrificial calf. Go get the calf I've been fattening up to sacrifice. And we're going to thank God that my son is home. Fattened up and feasted upon. For he was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. The father in this narrative is none other than our father in heaven. For he does not wait for us to come to him to get with the program and get better. He runs out to us in deep, gut wrenching emotion, reaches into our life with his gracious love and covers us in the righteousness of His Son. But not all of us are happy about this. We don't mind being the younger son. We don't mind being the younger brother in this narrative. But really, in reality, we are much more like the older brother. Are we really ever happy when someone is forgiven? We say we are. But really, we're not. And when I mean forgiven, I don't mean like that. Ter like, if you get to heaven and Hitler's there, you're like, yay, yeah, Jesus loves everyone. Well, maybe not. Hitler. But the thing is, you get there, it's like, hey, but I'm talking about that person that's wronged you. That, that girl that started a rumor about you in seventh grade, and you couldn't get a date for three years. I'm talking about that guy that would just mock you and ridicule you and make you feel an inch tall. I'm talking about that person that harasses you and torments you. I'm talking about right now, I love looking at Facebook and seeing every diverse opinion. This is the thing. I love that we live in an era where right now people can watch the sermon and the service live stream. It's great, but the problem is, too, there are a million different articles people can read as well. And guess what they all teach you? Nothing. You're still dumb like I. It doesn't help much. But what does it do? It turns us against each other. Like the older brother, we're never really happy with God loving someone else. We want to be treated like the only child. We want to be treated like we're the only one that matters. We do this, don't we? Haven't you ever seen parents t telling like a five-year-old that they're going to have a new sibling? What do the parents say to the child if it's an only child? Don't worry, I won't love you any less. But how does the child feel? Like you love me less. The siblings say one of them is the favorite. One of them is loved by mom and dad. Don't deny that you feel this way with God. Don't deny that you think God loves others more than He loves you. Because we do feel this way sometimes. Right now, it's, it's like I saw a brother pastor comment. It's not fair to blame the churches about COVID when it was the protesters' fault. Why on earth would we think the world would love the church? Has the world ever loved the church? What's the answer to that? No. The church, the world has never loved the church. It is hated the church. It feels like we're not being listened to. It feels like God doesn't care about us. But he does. It doesn't feel like he cares about us because if you're like me, you're feeling drained, running low. Maybe you're running low on confidence. Confident that everything is going to be okay. That God is in control of everything. He has written your name in the book of life. You are going to be fine. Maybe you're running low on patience. I don't know about any of you, but my blow-up abilities have increased over the last couple of months. My ability to lose it on my children, to have no patience with my wife, and sometimes even have bad thoughts about my parishioners. Has increased. Am I the only one who's lost patience this time? And compassion. Actually feeling and experiencing what your neighbor's going through. And not being able to function because you feel their anxiety. You 
feel their stress, you feel their worry. We're low on joy, low on faith. Because of this, we're low on love and low on forgiveness. But remember what the father said to the older son. He didn't tell him you're right, you've done a good job. You stayed home and were obedient. He doesn't say that to him. What he says is, is you are always with me. And all that is mine is yours. All that is God's is yours. Therefore, the thing the devil and the world and your own sinful flesh have to offer you, they do not grant you happiness, nor do they drain you and cause you to despair because they can't offer you anything. All that the Father has is yours. All of His righteousness, all of His life, all of His forgiveness is yours. God is the one that fills you up in the forgiveness of your sins. You're low on patience. You're low on compassion. You're low on confidence. You're low on everything. In the forgiveness of your sins, God fills you back up. For we have a God who stretches His arms around the whole world. And yet at the same time loves each and every one of you individually. He knows your struggles. He knows your worries. He knows your fears. He knows your anxieties. He knows your despair. And on the cross, He put it all to death. On the cross was your Lord Jesus fattened up as the great sacrificial calf with your sins, that He may be slaughtered there. And this day you may feast on His body and blood and be forgiven. So my friends, I encourage you to take heart in the voice of your merciful Father. For this saying is trustworthy and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom you are the chief, as am I. And on the cross, Christ put all of that sin to death that you may be forgiven unconditionally. You are not a child of a wrathful deity, but a child of a merciful Father. So take heart. This day you are filled up. So during the week, when you fail at being patient, when you fail with the compassion, when you fail with the confidence, take a deep breath and either call me or call, well, don't call Pastor Dan, he's away on vacation. But call me up. And don't bark, but just hear the words of forgiveness. Talk to your spouse, talk to your child, talk to your parent, talk to your neighbor. And they will say the same words to you. In Christ, you who were dead are now alive. You who were lost are found. May you rejoice in that reality and be full unto eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen.